You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to wirelessly transmit electricity. Okay, so before we get started, let's go ahead and learn how this works. Electric current is induced in a coil when a magnetic field is changing, which means if I were to take a magnet like this and put it in and out of the coil, such as this, a current would be induced across it. There would be no current, however, if the magnetic field is just there and not changing. So that's really simply how wireless energy works. It's important to remember, however, that direct current would just be a constant magnetic force, such as just having the magnet inside of here. While alternating current, on the other hand, would be a changing magnetic force as it fluctuates back and forth through positive and negative cycles. Here is a design for a simple wireless energy transmitter that I found online. Although you can tell at a glance on this circuit that it's powered by DC, it's actually oscillating back and forth to DC through that transistor there. So in the way, it's a pseudo alternating current. I loosely wrapped 40 turns of magnet wire I salvaged out of a TV to form this. This will act as sort of a wireless energy field detector. As wireless energy will induce a current into this coil and therefore make the LED light up. And the schematic shows another coil that's center tapped. So this is also 40 turns, however it's 20 turns and then I pulled out some wire and twisted it together and then 20 more turns and then that's it. So 40 turns in total, but center tapped. The schematic shows a different transistor, however any transistor should work as long as it's not a MOSFET for this particular circuit. Transistors like these can be easily salvaged out of pretty much any electronics you find lying around. Be sure to take sandpaper and sand off the ends of the wires, because magnet wire has an enamel coating that'll make it so it won't conduct unless you take it off. And so after you sand it off, you should be able to see the coppery sheen such as this. Okay, so let's go ahead and make out the circuit really quickly. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and connect your negative up to your emitter of your transistor. If you need to find out the pinout, it's best to just Google the ID number on your transistor to pull up a data sheet for it. And then with our center tapped coil, on the two ends I've attached wires, and the center tap wire is going to be connected up to our voltage positive. Okay, so let's connect up the positive wire, and connect one end of the coil to the collector, and one end of the coil to the base. And according to the schematic diagram I found online, this should be all we need. So let's go ahead and power it up and see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, as I place this coil over the other coil, the LED lights up a little bit. Now for me at least, I've played around with the voltage, and it seems like to get the LED to glow the maximum brightness, I'm giving it about 1.2 volts. And the circuit is drawing a current of 0.37 amps. I have an idea to improve upon this circuit a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. In a previous video, we made this frequency generator. I've made a few changes though. This is for audio modulation that I was using for a plasma speaker, but we won't be using that in this. For this frequency generator, we input around 2.9 volts over here, and then depending on how we tune this variable resistor, it gives us a different frequency out of these two outputs over here. Okay, so I have my frequency generator hooked up to 3 volts. Let's go ahead and connect up the speaker to make sure it is producing a good frequency. As you can hear, it is giving us a nice frequency, and as you can see, when I tune this potentiometer, the frequency changes. I'm going to go ahead and enter in this MOSFET I salvaged from a TV. And now by connecting the positive output of my frequency generator over here to the base of the MOSFET, and by connecting the ground of my frequency generator to the emitter of the MOSFET, we should have made a pseudo amplifier. And so now we can take that coil we made and just ignore the center tap part and connect the two ends to the MOSFET. I'm going to take a separate DC voltage from the one powering the power supply and go ahead and connect it over here to the collector of the MOSFET. Now I'll take this end of the coil and connect it over here to the emitter. And now the other end of the coil over here is going to be connected to the ground of this power supply. Okay, and if I'm correct, this should be all we need. Just for fun, I'm going to connect this speaker in parallel with the frequency generator. I'm going to do this so I can hear the disturbances happening as the magnetic field changes. Okay, and now we should be ready for our experiment, so I'm going to go ahead and power on my power supply. And as you can see, as I bring the coil near and near, the LED will turn on. Now let's see what adjusting the frequency will do to the LED. As you can see, it's still blinking, but obviously, the higher the frequency, the better the LED is going to be shining. As you can see, I can even slide a piece of paper underneath this coil and the light will still light up. So hopefully you guys now have a better understanding about how electricity can be transmitted wirelessly. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like this every week, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. And thank you to a lot of your support. And so with that said, I'll see you guys next week. Be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make a full bridge rectifier.